Welcome to Wrestling With Heart, a podcast looking at pro wrestlers giving back to their community. Join me, Stanley Carr, as I interview wrestling's hottest names who use their platforms as entertainers to raise awareness and do community service. Hello there and welcome to another edition of Wrestling With Heart. This is the show where we talk with professional wrestlers about their lives in and outside of the ring as well as doing acts of charity, community service, volunteering, inspiring others in some form or fashion. We're always about positivity here on the show. And with me today, I've got a very special guest. He is part of the National Wrestling Alliance, the NWA. I am pleased to welcome on the show... Psycho Boy Fodder. Welcome to the show. What's up, man? Thanks for having me, brother. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's talk about your childhood and upbringing. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Fayetteville, North Carolina, so not too far from where I live right now. I was born in Greenville, North Carolina, and then we moved to Fayetteville. We lived in Raleigh, North Carolina, and then ended up coming back here to Fayetteville. Oh, wow. So we've kind of been up and down the, the North Carolina area. North Carolina's, oh, yeah. North Carolina's a hotbed for professional wrestling. I mean, the Hardy Boys, you know, basically started their own backyard wrestling promotion. Guys like Shannon Moore, guys like Gregory Helms, Shane Helms got involved with that. Uh, just unbelievable what they were able to do. How did you get into professional wrestling? What got you interested? Just as a child, I mean, I loved wrestling. I mean, I fell in love with it from the very first time that I saw it. So, I mean, I mean, I can remember, you know, going to the video store when they had VHS mm -hmm. videotapes um, and you would go to the video store and they would have like, you know, SummerSlam 92, the VHS tape and you could rent it and or they had, uh, you know, like WWF. They, they would have like these, um, I don't know if you remember these, like the Coliseum home videos. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, like, just, man, going to the video store, you know, renting different uh, wrestling videotapes. And, you know, my love for wrestling just grew, man. And then, you know, when I was growing up was like probably the hottest time in wrestling because that's when you had you know, the Attitude Era and NWO and WCW and ECW. I mean, that's probably the best time ever in wrestling. Yeah. Um, and I grew up and experienced all that. So just, I mean, naturally, I always wanted to do it from the time I was a child. Uh, and then somehow ended up getting into it and actually doing it. Crazy. I mean, the Attitude Era was just a boom for professional wrestling. And like you talked about with going to you know, video stores and stuff, you know, Blockbuster stores like that, you know, they were selling those VHS tapes too. Not only you could rent them, but they would have them for sale. Um, I would go and um, as a kid and they would have like stuff like no way out 2001 or no mercy 2000, you know, just, just going in there and, and you could buy them for like maybe under 10 bucks at the time. Um, oh yeah. Those are the best video games too. Like the N64, like no mercy and mm -hmm. like the no way out and WCW versus NWO, like the THQ games. Yep. I mean, those, those, Smackdown, those were, shut your mouth, smack down, just bring it. Yeah. I mean, those were, those were incredible video games. <laughs> if you're into gaming, I mean that those are the games as far as wrestling goes to start out with, because they've got some pretty insane uh storylines and i would just say like the graphics over time have just improved as you, if you look at like 2k23 for instance just it's night and day difference oh it's very very uh very realistic um compared to the ones that that we had growing up but i think the gameplay was better on the stuff that we had really yeah i think i think just the gameplay like I couldn't like I I really got out of video games, man. When um, you had to have um, like when they had like the two toggle sticks like on the controller, and you had to yep. like move the guy like with this way, and I mean it just it was just like too confusing for me. So that's when sure. I kind of got out. Of it. But the the N sixty four video games, man, the creative players, I mean, just everything about them was was just awesome. What was your first wrestling video game that you ever owned? Oh, um, man, I want to say it was a, it was the Super Nintendo one. Um, it had, uh, 
it had Taker on it, Shawn Michaels. I think Mr. Perfect was on there. I can't remember the name of it though. Um, it was one of the original, like Royal Rumble. It might have been. I don't know if that was the name. Um, but it was a. It was one of the original Super Nintendo ones. Um, yeah. It, they only had like eight wrestlers on there. Sure. Um, man, I'm trying to think of the name of it. If if if, well, if I wasn't on my phone doing this, I would Google it. Um, but it was one of the original Super Nintendo ones. Somebody in the comments section that that may be watching this might know the answer. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, yeah. They had uh, they had a uh, Shawn Michaels had like the red and the red and white uh, tights and like yeah. that was Baker was still doing like the stuff with like the purple gloves and everything. Yeah, I mean that was, that was definitely an awesome game too. I'm thinking my first one because I've only like owned a Game Boy growing up, so I was like, I guess oh, like. Wow. Because I was like, um, they had, I think it was called Betrayal. It was like this, it wasn't like a, one of those like wrestling, wrestling games where you could play like, uh, like when you're actually like in the ring wrestling, it was like a storyline right. involving, um, I think Stephanie McMahon and, uh, like you had to save her from somebody, somebody, I guess, kidnapped her or something like that. And like, you could play oh, as like, really? yeah, you could play as like Undertaker or The Rock or Triple H and you had to save her from whoever was like kidnapped or whatever like that and it was like a it was a pretty good game um but like i would say like my first wrestling wrestling game that i ever owned i think was was road to wrestlemania that was cool oh, yeah yeah they had a lot a lot of good games uh when we were coming up for sure mm -hmm. yeah definitely um man that's so cool though so who are like some of the people that you like idolize like some of your favorite wrestlers <sighs> Um, I mean, you know, when I was when I was growing up, um, Shawn Michaels was probably my favorite wrestler. But once I got into like wrestling itself and being able to like understand what wrestling was or what wrestling is, um, and what's kind of actually happening, um, in the ring between two performers, Bret Hart is probably my favorite wrestler of all time. I mean, his work is just unmatched i mean the guy is just a total workhorse i mean you can't find a bad match from the guy no. um you know so i mean guys like bret hart british bulldog i mean a lot of a lot of that hart family um i mean those guys are just they're just unbelievable mr perfect i mean there's just tons of guys um and if you if you look at a lot of my work you'll see like a lot of um uh, callbacks to like Mr. Perfect or Bret Hart or just different things where you could you could watch it and go like oh okay like he probably looks like he watches like a lot of Bret Hart stuff or whatever you know yeah I mean like Bret Hart Mr. Perfect I mean had some classics back in the day I mean SummerSlam yeah. 91 I mean for the IC title I mean well, definitely there's there's a there's another um uh Bret Hart Mr. Perfect match um not from SummerSlam I'm trying to think um I don't know if it was if it was on a raw but they had they had a few like really really good matches man. Oh yeah, no doubt about that. Um just great technical work. I mean, who doesn't love a good technical wrestling match and Bret Hart and Mr. Perfect Kurt Henning, you know, brought it every single time they wrestled each other. Oh, for sure. And their work doesn't look rehearsed that's that's some of the best part of their stuff is like you can tell that they're doing a lot of stuff on feel in the ring and kind of listening to the crowd and going with it and they're just you know when when you get as good as those two guys are um just everything that they do looks good in the ring oh <laughs> it, it's art man they're just they're just painting the canvas no, oh, 100%. Yeah. All right. So getting into the business, you knew this is what you wanted to do. Uh, what can you tell me about the training process? Because it's not easy. Okay. So when I was 16, my art teacher was a professional wrestler. So if you kind of go back and you watch some old TNA um, there was a guy in TNA, his name was Laz, um, and he used to wear like the face paint and mm -hmm. 
Um, I think when he was working in TNA, he was wearing like jeans and kind of had like a, he was one of the first guys kind of doing like the real um, edgy sexual gimmicks like gold dust and, and, and all of that. And he was actually my art teacher um, when I was. It's amazing. And yeah. So he would get like, when he was coming up, you had like him, um, Shannon Moore, Shane Helms, C.W. Anderson, Lodi. They kind of all came up together and he would get me into, they used to run shows at a place uh, out here called King's Bar. And he would get me into those SCW shows with my dad. Um, Cause I wasn't old enough to even get in the shows. I mean, you had to be like 21 because they were yeah. like bar shows. And when they were doing, um, when they were doing these shows, we would go and we would watch the shows, man. And I mean, the shows were just absolutely unbelievable. Look, we got a visitor. Oh, hello. hi there. Hey there. Hello. <laughs> What's his name? The, uh, David. Say hello, David. Hello. Hi, David. Your... Say what's up. Hello. <laughs> what's going on? He's... I'll come holler at you in a minute, buddy. All right. The, uh, we had a impromptu guest here. Yeah. Special Hobbit guest. In. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we would go, we would, my father would take me to the shows and, um, when we would go watch these shows and I met so many guys there. I mean, I met the Hardy boys there. That's where I met Shannon Moore. That's where I met Shane Helms, CW Anderson. And just through going to those shows, he got me into wrestling school when I was 16 or 17. And I first started training then. And he actually lied to the people at the wrestling school and told them I was 18. And then once they found out I wasn't 18, they told me I couldn't come back. So from the time I was 17 until I was, I started training wrestling again when I was 33. So I'm 36 now. Um, and I just figured, man, like I saw an advertisement when I went into the gym one day and at the time I was doing competitive bodybuilding shows and I just saw this advertisement and I was like, you know what, man, like if I'm ever going to try to do it, then now is the time because like I'm 33, yeah. I'm only getting to point. So I got to go ahead and try to do it. And I went, I signed up and then before I knew it, it just kind of took off. And, you know, the training process in itself is very, um, I think, I think just training and wrestling in general is it's one of those things where like you either get it really fast or you don't get it at all Think or um, swim, yeah yeah and it's you you like i kind of see that now like with kids that will come to the school and things like that and you know now we're kind of the ones uh like me and angelina like we go to the school and we kind of help out sometimes and things like that and you can just kind of see when you're looking at somebody, if they've been training for two months or three months or six months, you kind of figure out real fast, like, okay, like this person's, they get it. Or somebody might've been training for six or eight months and you just go like, man, I, you know, this, they might, they may never get it, you know, like maybe refereeing is for them or managing is for them or, or whatever, you know? So the, the training process in itself is just one of those things where, it's it's an it's an ever evolving process like right. you don't me you don't learn how to do wrestling in 10 weeks or 12 weeks um and a lot of schools are kind of built like that they might give you a 12 week class and then just kind of churn you out uh and i was talking to johnny swinger about this um maybe 6 months ago we were talking about this and one of the things we were talking about is he was like you know you go to wrestling school and you learn how to bump and how to roll and how to protect yourself when you're in the ring. Um, he was like, but you learn how to work when you start getting booked and you do a lot of matches. He was like, that's when you learn how to work the crowd and how to, uh, you know, have better timing and like your pay the pacing of your matches and things like that. Sure. Yeah. It's, 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 it's very intense and it, it takes a lot of discipline. And the cool thing about the business is you don't have to be a wrestler necessarily. Like you could be a manager. There's so many different roles, a referee, 
Um, and it's really cool that they can teach that at schools. You can show that, hey, you know, if you're not able to do this, you can do this, and there's a place for you. Like, there still is a home for you in this field. Oh, for sure. And it, it takes a whole gang of people to run a wrestling show. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean everybody is super important. Um, from the person booking the matches to the person handling the travel to the people there uh, producing the matches. I mean, obviously, like, once you get to television, you know, there's producers on the matches and there's things that they're asking you to, uh, you know, kind of help create and, um, you, you know, the, the the referee. I mean, just everybody that's involved in the show um, mm -hmm. helped create the environment for the show to continue on. When I first started training, I started training in September of 2019. And that's when I was like taking like my first bumps. Um, and then the COVID happened uh, February, March of 2020. So there were still some training, excuse me, sessions going on. Um, but I pretty much like learned how to train through the COVID. Um, and then when COVID was kind of, I'd say like mid 2020, like when the COVID kind of scaled down a little bit and they started kind of opening some things and doing some things. Um, when they first, when they did that first big wave of releases over at WWE and they let, you know, a lot of guys go like EC3 and all those guys, I, you know, I actually knew EC3 prior to ever getting involved in wrestling. Um, like EC3 really? knew me bodybuilding and supplements and things like that. And we were just kind of really friendly with each other. And when he found out that I was doing wrestling, uh, when he had got released and his 90 days was up uh, from the WWE release, he had called me and said, hey, like, I got this, we're shooting this thing um, that we're probably going to use on Impact. He was like, and I need a guy to kind of fight me in this thing. And he was like, I think you'd be the perfect guy to do it. So he was like, this was like on a Wednesday. And I was like, oh, like, when are you doing it? And he goes like, I need you here like Saturday morning. He was like, if you could come to Orlando. So I just bought a ticket and I went down there. And like, that's where I first met like uh, Adam Shear or Braun Strowman. That's where I first met Moose and Spud and all those guys. And, you know, through him, he kind of introduced me to all these different people. Um, so like right away, I was getting a lot of knowledge and a lot of coaching and advice from guys that were doing it, you know, at the top of. Yeah. the pro level oh you know i mean sure. at adam and adam was helping me you know adam was the wwe champion when i met him so i mean like here i here i am like had i had only been training for eight months i hadn't even had a match yet in front of a crowd and i was here doing this whole segment bit in front of all these people i didn't know um you know for that was going to be used on impact wrestling so, I mean, like, just right away, I was just kind of thrown into the fire with the wrestling. Yeah. And the cool thing about, you know, your situation was that being, you know, in the pandemic phase, it seemed like things were quiet, you know, a little bit as it seemed like you'd have more time to do your workouts and things like that and away from a lot of people. So you're able to get that training, you have some more time to do it. and you know, before you're thrusted into that spotlight. Oh, sure, man. And, you know, the the weird thing about doing all the stuff like during COVID and all that was that, you know, the stuff that we were shooting for that, that got used like on Impact and then like when EC3 got into shooting like the, the Free the Narrative films and all that, all that stuff was done with – um like what what I would call like prop crowds, right? Like just basically extras that they brought mm -hmm. in, yeah. boys and that kind of stuff, right? So when you're when you're doing something like that, like I kind of learned how to have matches, not really in front of crowds. So when you're when you're when you're working matches and you're not doing them in front of crowds, you can kind of work at whatever pace you want because the people there are already kind of queued up to do whatever they need to do right mm -hmm. um in, like cheering or booing or 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 whatever's happening uh um, right. for them. but once you actually start working in front of crowds that's totally different right so then you can't work as fast 
you got to listen to the crowd and it's a completely different thing. Uh, and that's one thing that I had to learn, you know, post doing all of this stuff that was really heavily featured online. That was kind of giving me like the looks is like, I'm doing all this stuff and I can work at whatever pace I want when we're shooting these things. Um, and then I have like indie promoters and bookers that are hitting me up to book me when they start bringing the crowds back and I'm getting out there going like, Oh wow. Like I now, like I can't work yeah. as normally work, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's like, um, you kind of have to take that big dive into the pool, so to speak, to start, oh. to start, to start, you know, getting ready. And, you know, like the crowd, the crowd's here back to business. You're on, let's get the camera rolling on red. For sure. And that's, and that's why, like, for the first year and a half that I worked matches in front of crowds, you know, I knew so many guys through EC3 um, that, you know, I, and, and I'm very friendly with a lot of the North Carolina promoters, bookers, all that type of deal. So my, my thought process behind doing this was, I would reach out to guys like, say, like a, like Moose or, um, you know, like, a am just trying to just think of some different guys or like, a, like an Ace Austin from like Impact or somebody like that, right? Yeah. Guys that are really good. Um, and my whole idea was, is I was like, okay, like, I'm just going to bring in my own guys. I'm going to book my own matches and I'm going to bring in my own guys. And all I'm going to work is guys that wrestle on television because one, it helps me because I get to work the guy that's got a big name in the business Yes, to bring my camera crew and they're going to film the match. So I have the match on tape and now I can put that on my YouTube and market it and promote it. Put on and your then, reel, yeah. Right. And then I get the experience of working with the guy that's already working at television and I can learn things from them, like how to pace a match or how to call a match or how to slow down, how to speed up, how to work the crowd, you know? So I just did that for like a year and a half. I just brought in all my own guys and I just took that time to learn from them. Um, because my end goal with that was that I'm going to invest in myself and work all these different guys. And then if I work all these different guys um, and I get the experience, then I will have TV level experience within a year or two and I'll be able to get hired and go up to TV. And that's pretty much exactly what happened. What a unique experience that had to have been, you know, everything shuts down. You're working in front of, you know, what, what is, you know, basically, you know, extras that you could call a crowd and then when everything kind of starts back up again, you're in the big time, you're getting your, your work in there and people are seeing you and, and it's that transition you're able to make is just smooth because you're able to practice and put in all that effort. Kudos to you for doing that. That's, that's not easy. Thank you're welcome. I mean, you, I mean, and you have to, you know, I mean, there's, a, there's, there's probably a lot of people that are watch this that are like 19 or 20 years old and they go like, you know, I don't have, you know, why well, I, I don't have the money to invest to do that. You know what I mean? Um, and like, I totally get that too. You know, when I, I mean, I started wrestling when I was 33, so I got 13 years of, you know, experience, like life experience and working and doing mm -hmm. all those kind of things to where, you know, I'm kind of what I would consider, like I would tell a, a 19 year old is like, dude, I'm, I'm 13 years ahead of you in life, you know, as far as, working and making money and doing these different things where I can go out and invest in myself. If it's something that I want to do, you know, that, you know, you'll be there at some point too. So, I mean, it's just different. And, you know, uh, me and uh, Angelina talk about this all the time is everybody's journey to get there is totally different. Right. You yeah, know, I'm, so. Yeah. It's, um, you know, not everybody is a wrestling fan when they start out. Some people are wrestling fans when they start out. So when they fall into it, you know, they're able to invest in themselves and they're able to make, you know, the most of their time. And then the sky's the limit. Oh, a hundred percent. 
a hundred percent. And it's yeah. just like, you know, some guys, some guys, uh, and, and we were talking about this not too long ago. It's like some guys work, you know, 800 matches and then they finally get hired. And then, and some guys never work a match and they just, and they get hired by WWE. Because WWE goes like, oh, like you look great. You're seven foot tall. You you'll be perfect for TV, right. and and they take them and they train them, and then in six months they're on television. You know, so I mean, everybody's uh, journey to get there is just totally different. No doubt about that. Who have been some of your favorite opponents that you've been in the ring with? Oh man, um, Gangrel, um, Moose. Uh, I wrestled Zach Gowan in his retirement match. Um, nice. That was a very uh, unique match where I, I learned a ton from him. Mm-hmm. Um, man, uh, we just worked like a, I love working mixed tags because like me and Angelina work mixed tags all the time now together. Um, we just worked uh, Brian Pillman Jr. and Ari Alexander at AML about a week and a half ago. Great match. Tom Latimer. Mm-hmm. great opponent um man i'm just trying to think of like some really good guys that i've that i've worked um john schuyler one of the best wrestlers i've ever been in the ring with uh weston blake from wwe yep me and him unbelievable chemistry i mean we've done I think was, when we were go ahead I think, he, I think he was in the forgotten sons nxt yep. yeah He's an incredible wrestler, man. I mean, like the oh, guys yeah. when we were doing like the CYN stuff, um, and we were all traveling around doing those shows. I mean, me and him were working each other all the time on those shows, and he's an incredible wrestler. Um, gosh, man. I mean, QT Marshall. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. great wrestler, great wrestler. Um, very, very underrated, and does not get the credit that he deserves for how good of a worker he is. Um. And, and, and I say that because I've been in the ring with him and worked a 20 minute match with him, you know, mm-hmm. um, and where I, well, we worked a 20 minute match and 50% of the match we were just calling on the fly. Um, so if you, if you ever get the chance, just go to my YouTube and watch the match. It's on there. Um, we okay. worked at a district championship wrestling. Camarado is a good wrestler. Nick Camarado. Mm-hmm. Great fun time um, to work uh another good match that we that we did was uh me and ec3 worked uh qt marshall and billy gunn in a tag match uh down at district championship wrestling in atlanta oh. that was a great match you can watch that on on my youtube for free i mean i mean there's i probably have 65 matches on my youtube right now for free oh, nice. um just with everybody i mean like guys like ace austin um man i mean there's just there's so many matches on there that you could go in there and check out now did you make some appearances for aew yeah yeah i um i worked for them three or four times um and then we did the big uh we at the final battle pay-per-view we did the big run in the big cyn run in uh at the pay-per-view there me ec3 ron stroman weston blake um, so, I mean, I've just kind of been all around, man, all over the place. That had been pretty cool. I mean, another mainstream promotion uh, on television. I mean, it's amazing how in 2023, there's so much wrestling out there today compared to maybe 20 years ago. Dude, it was, you know, what's kind of weird is like, um, so when we put out that Free the Narrative 2 that had, uh, Ron Stroman in it. Yeah. Uh, Not long after that is when we were kind of getting queued up that we were going to do the ring of honor thing. And it's kind of weird. Like I always say like, you know, that, you know, God will put you in situations where like that, that month, um, December, 2021 was kind of like a, I don't want to say it was like my breakout month, but it was a big month. Right. Because we did the, the ring of honor run in. And I felt like, um, that was the biggest crowd I'd ever been in front of. I mean, that was the last ring of honor pay-per-view that they were doing. We were, we had this big, huge run in spot that we were doing like right before the main event. Um, 
And that there was probably 5,000 people there at that event. And that was the most people I'd ever been in front of. Cause I was mm. like, Holy cow. It's like, it looks like there's like just a, a mob of people out here, you know? Um, and the next day is when I got contacted by AEW, um, to come do like elevation and dark and all that kind of stuff. And when I went to AEW, there was like 13,000 people there. Oh, yeah. Um, so it was, it was a little different because like we were just doing a run in, in front of like 5,000 people, but I felt like that experience is what prepared me to be able to wrestle in front of 13,000 people. Um, and that's a totally different experience in itself, you know, where you're wrestling in front of that many people, like. You know, people always, people always ask me, like, is it more nerve wracking to wrestle in front of 500 people or like crowds like, like an AEW, like where, where it's like 13,000 people there. It's much more nerve wracking to wrestle in front of 500 people. Really? Oh yeah, for sure. Because you can see everybody when you do something like AEW or like Ring of Honor or like, like NWA, like you can't really, I can't really see past like the third or fourth row. Um, because it's like the way the lights are positioned and everything, like you can see like those first couple of rows. And then like, once you get past like a couple of rows, you can't even see anything. So it's much easier to do that as opposed to like, if you're wrestling in front of 200 people Mm -hmm. at an end, it's like, man, dude, like everybody can see you and you can see everybody and they're all, they all got their eyes on you and you know, you don't want to make any mistakes. Not to mention you know, where the stage is positioned, the Titan Tron is positioned, you know, people do crazy stunts over there as well. So kind of have to be careful around those, that area too. Oh, most definitely, dude. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nice. Oh, wow. So you're with NWA currently. Um, yep. and, and, uh, you're working with, uh, and you're, uh, in a relationship with Angelina love. Tell me oh, about, yeah. Tell me about tell me about how you guys met. Man, we met at TV. Um, at TV. Just, yeah, I mean, we. Uh, I had actually, I was doing. They had brought me in, and I did a couple of matches on some of the tapings, and I saw her in the hallway, and we met. And then once we met, it was just like it was just over from that point, you know. Oh. So, yeah, we were just kind of just like best friends and then you know we started doing the gimmick stuff together and i was like oh man you know i mean it just it just worked out i mean me and her just like best friends man together every day so that's so amazing were you big um you were a big tna fan did you watch uh the beautiful people i know they were she was a part of that group too no so during during that time period um like with with wrestling so i had around that 2008 2009 time period i had kind of drifted away from wrestling like i really? wasn't really much anymore uh, yeah so like if, it's kind of a funny story um on that first free the narrative um that we did it was like me versus john schuyler was ec3 versus matt cardona uh, i think moose worked matt seidel and that during that period of time, that was when Matt Seidel was doing like the Evan Bourne stuff um, mm-hmm. when he was in WWE. And I remember I met Matt Seidel and I had no idea who he was. I had no clue who he was. And we were just kind of talking about supplements because uh, like that's my real gig is doing supplements. Like I run a few supplement brands. Um, nice. And we were just talking. And I was like, yeah, man, you know, like I heard you like do a lot of stuff with the wrestling stuff like you just kind of get around he was like yeah i get around a little bit and i just had no clue who he was who i was even talking to and me and him like exchanged phone numbers and he uh popped me a message one day and he was just like hey man like i know you like was like working on the wrestling stuff and all that like if you ever want to like come down here and like train at my spot like you come down here and hang out and train and, and i went down there a bunch of times and trained with him and i learned a whole load of stuff so like when i met when i met uh angelina i had no idea who angelina even was i just saw her in the hallway and we just kind of got to talking and then he was like oh like i'm such and such like um and i was like oh you're oh the tna girl oh okay got you (laughs) so i it just you know i never had any like when i met her like i never had any like oh my god like that's you know yeah. and love or anything like that i was just sure. like oh like you look nice and 
Yeah. You know, you're, you're easy to talk to. Like, oh, like we should just like date and hang out and stuff. That's awesome. Okay, so the, both of you are now working together uh, in the company. Yeah. Uh, tell me about what, what, what describe your characters that the both of you play on on uh, television. Just totally crazy, just like psycho about each other, but also like like I'm the psycho boy, she's the psycho girl, right? So we kind of just feed off of one another. But, you know, when she's managing me, like the psycho boy character is more or less um, like feeding off of her energy, right? So like if she's really happy that I'm devouring a guy, oh, it makes me super crazy and w makes me want to keep doing it, you know? Um, you know, so we have a lot of spots that we do um, in the matches um, that kind of showcase that. It's more like just two like totally like insane people, man. Like just kind of like like two people like man, all um, like almost like how it's it's got a few a few uh dynamics to it, right? So like one dynamic is like that old macho king Elizabeth dynamic where like you got two crazy people, but like me and her but also like me and her are not like arguing with each other or you know, I'm not like trying to like shield her from from other men, you know, like like how Macho you. King would do, right? Yes. Um, but it does have like that George the Animal steel, like ah, like slapping your face, like super yeah. crazy. Eating the um, turnbuckles. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it's got a lot of it's got a lot of those vibes to it though. But just well, kind of like with our own spin on it. Sure, sure. Who came up with like the characters of Psycho Boy and so EC3, so the name Fodder came from, it was kind of a joke, a little bit. Um, if you go back and you watch the credits on that first cinematic wrestling thing that we did that ended up on Impact, um, because I was the guy fighting EC3, and... I was kind of bumping around for him and, and he ultimately beats me in the fight there. They had me listed as Merton Woolard as the fodder, like basically like the prey, like getting destroyed by like EC3 yeah. and me and EC3 were talking about it. And when we were, when he was putting together the free, the narrative one and he was like, this fodder thing. He was like, I like that name. He was like, I think we're just going to call you fodder in, in free the narrative. And at first I was just like, I don't, I don't know, man. I was like fodder. I was like, it sounds kind of like, I was like, that doesn't sound good, man. You know? And he goes, trust me, man, it'll work. He was like, you'll be the psycho boy. And I was just like, that sounds all right. I was like, psycho boy fodder. And then we, and we did it. And it just, man, it just kind of just took off because yeah. I tried to do like, um, when I was first kind of wrestling, man, I, I kind of was trying to find myself and it's like, Oh, like, Oh, you know, one of my first gimmicks was like, kind of like, because I'm all jacked up and they wanted me to be like a baby face and, I was, they were like, what do you like? And I was like, I don't know. I like America, you know? And they were like, all right, like, well, you could just like wear like this American bandana and like the red, white, and blue tights. And that just, it like, it just wasn't me. Like, so when I started doing the stuff with EC3, you know, he was just like, man, he's like, when we do this thing, I was like, what do you want me to bring? And he was like, just bring black boots and black jeans. And I was like, okay. So when I started wearing the black boots and black jeans, he was like, this is you. He was like, you're jacked up, you're tatted up, black boots, black jeans. He was like, that's what you should wear. And I was like, cool. So we started doing it and it was just, it was just comfortable for me. So it just allowed me to be me. Um, and it worked. Always have to find your strengths uh, in order to get to where you want to go. And it seems like this character is definitely taking on a life of its own. It seems like you and Angelina have a lot of fun with it too. Oh, for sure, man. I mean, I, I mean, I love working with her and like, you know, when we first got together and we were dating and all that good stuff, it was just one of those things where like I got to thinking about it. And I was like, oh, man, I was like, it'd be cool if I was like psycho boy and you were like psycho girl, you know, because I like 
one of the compliments that we would always get is they say like, oh, like you two, you two look really good together. Um, you know, and people would just say that just as like us as like a couple. And I was like, man, you know, it'd be cool. Like if you like managed me and then we could do like mix tags and we could just, you can be the psycho girl. And we tried it. Um, we actually tried it the first time when I worked QT Marshall at district wrestling and it got a great crowd reaction and we had it on film and we sent it to Billy and Billy was like, this works. He was like, let's just do it on TV. And then after that, I mean, we've just been doing it on TV ever since. Yeah. And credit to Kyle Davis, because I think Kyle and Joe um, Galley were the ones who came up with the name Psycho Love. Um, they were like, we'll just call you guys like Psycho Love. And I was like, that sounds good to me. I was like, let's just let's just do that. That'll just be our duo name. And it's just it's it's just worked out perfectly. Yeah. Where do you see yourself uh, and Angelina see yourself with this uh, with these characters going forward? Like, what's your ultimate goal? man you know i mean i think man you know my my i've had a few different goals so like i'm 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 a person that i can't i can't do anything at like 60 percent. so like i have to do everything at 100 percent, or i just don't do it at all right so my first initial goal with wrestling was just like man you know if i could just like wrestle one time on tv that would be really cool and then it's like you do that once and you're just like oh like i could probably wrestle like every week on tv and then you slowly you you slowly just start adding more and more things because it's really never enough and i think the goal with our characters is to just you know expand um i would say just expand the characters and the presence within nwa um because nwa is a good platform for us it's very good like for our schedules and you know all the things that we got going on outside of wrestling mm -hmm. and i love nwa man because billy is very receptive to ideas from the talent um that's that's him and kyle and joe all the agents there are just very um they're they're very cool about letting you come to them and say like, Hey, like I got this idea. Like, what do you think? Um, and it just, and to, sh to show you that, I mean, like, I mean, we brought the psycho boy, psycho girl gimmick to them. And we were like, man, like we'd really like to do this here. And they were like, yeah, like, let's do it here. Let's, let's go ahead and do it and see how it works out. So, I think a few, a few things, right? Like I want to win the N NWA TV title. That's one of my goals. And if the NWA ever did the NWA mixed tag team titles, um, I think that would definitely be on our goal list as well. Um, because I don't think anybody's ever done the mixed tag team titles. No, I don't think so. That I think they would be the first to do it. Yeah, and I think I and I think that that would be history maker a real cool thing to do um and i think we'd be the perfect people to carry the belts yeah i mean i love seeing the dynamics between the male and the female uh, wrestlers um i think we i I don't, I don't think we've seen a lot of that in this day and time but definitely like back in the day you know mixed tag matches were a lot of fun to watch they still are but it's great to see more male female interaction yeah and the and the and the the nwa mixed tag team matches are kind of different from the indie tag team matches because there's no like you know guy on girl um yeah. physicality in the yeah. matches right um yeah. at end of play so you have to be very creative how you do things um sure. with the mixed tag matches there because there can't be you know the guys have to stick with the guys and the girls have to stick with the girls whereas like some of the ones that we do on the indies um you know we can hit a little quick double team move on somebody, you know, like if I do, like I do like this combo deal where like I snap the guy out of the corner, I do the Mr. Perfect neck breaker. I mm -hmm. pop right up, I kick him and then I give him an elbow drop. Right. But like right. when we do mixed tags, you know, we'll do something like where I'll snap him out of the corner, tag her, hit the Mr. Perfect neck breaker. She'll follow right behind me, do the Mr. Perfect neck breaker. And then she'll do the drop kick, tag me back in, you know? So yeah. there's, there's a lot of cool things that you can do. Um, 
in either sector, whether you're doing them on the indies or you're doing the NWA style. Well, definitely. There's a lot of ways you could go with that. Let's switch gears now. Let's talk about some of the stuff you've done outside of the ring. Uh, talk about some of the charity work or stuff you've done uh, in your community. Uh, what kind of organizations have you have you worked with over the years? Well, the big thing is is um, one of the big events that we did. Man, this was quite a little while ago, um, but we teamed up with J. Cole. This was uh, back when he had first got signed to Rock Nation or Live Nation, and we did like a big back-to-school bash thing um, for the kids and like a basketball tournament and, you know, school supplies for all the kids. And then, you know, we had this uh, thing coming up. Um, and so, J so just to reference that, like, J. Cole's ex, he's from uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina, too. Oh, cool. um, so there's a lot of guys have kind of come out of this area or from around this area that are just in all different lines of work. Um, and then, you know, we have the big event coming up, which is the Highland Park for Cooper um, for the NWA, where we are, um, you know, there was the big tragic shooting in Highland Park. And uh, this young man um, was actually, I believe he was the youngest, um, one of the youngest victims of that. And he's just been recovering. And um, I believe he's paralyzed from the waist down. So there's a lot of things that the family needs. Um, and, you know, Billy is a huge uh, proponent for charity work and that's his community. And, we're putting on like a huge wrestling show for everybody in and around that area. It's a big benefit show. We got Camille on there. We got Natalia Markova on there. Me, Angelina Love, uh, Jordan Clearwater, EC3, uh, the Savages will be there. Country Gentlemen. So I mean, it's a huge loaded card. Oh yeah, and stacked, stacked card, and everything that we're doing uh, is for this young man and his family. Wow, that that was a terrible tragedy, uh, devastating to say the least. Uh, just unbelievable. Yeah, and it's very strange. Like, too, man. Um, being like when we went there, um, you know, even being in the area, um, like where it transpired. You know what I mean? It's just a very, um, very weird. Um, experience being there you know like or being in and around where you know something like that happened um so i mean i think the show saturday is going to be great i think it's going to be a huge turnout i think they're going to raise a ton of money uh for this young man and his family and you know i mean he deserves it man oh definitely um you had mentioned earlier uh you specialize in supplements uh, running yeah. a supplement company. Tell me about that. How you got that started up? Man, so man, that was probably a decade ago. Um, so I actually met uh, a guy who owned a supplement manufacturing company at the time, and he has a lot of brands that were doing manufacturing with him. And I got involved with him, like on the marketing side. I, I'm kind of self taught on all the marketing that sure. I know. Um, I guess you can say like YouTube university or whatever everybody's saying now, you know, yeah. um, I mean, there's just so many outlets and avenues to learn things on the internet to help, uh, your skill set and help you make money. Um, and I just kind of took everything that I knew from marketing and just applied it to supplements. And one of the ideas that he had was, to just kind of start our own house brands that were, uh, you know, owned by the manufacturing company. And, um, I mean, we've just built all these different brands up, man. I mean, we got four or five brands now, man. And, you know, all of them are, they're, they're all, uh, geared and marketed towards, you know, different, um, different people on different fitness journeys. Mm -hmm. Um, so some people are on more like the health and wellness. Some people are on more like, you know, like the hardcore bodybuilding. Some people are just kind of like in the middle. Uh, and I've been doing that for probably a decade, man, is just all supplements, marketing, you know, building websites, you know, writing product descriptions, picking athletes, doing content, man. And, you know, obviously like content is king now. Oh, yeah. um, 
yeah so i mean just doing that um you know and having that experience doing that also kind of translated into me knowing how to market myself as a wrestler you know and and to kind of to knowing that like with most everything perception is reality right so if you want people to view you as something then you need to associate yourself with that um and be presented in that light right so it's like if you want people to view you as a tv wrestler then you need to work tv guys that's how people start to view you you know they start going like oh like i know that guy like the uh, he works all the guys from tv you know and then people start to associate you as like oh like well he's a tv he's a tv wrestler too yeah um so it's yeah. just kind of navigating all that man yeah it's amazing to see you know your progress and you know combining your loves and making it in the nwa you know one of the most iconic and legendary wrestling promotions in the world and you're just killing it so keep up the good work um why do you feel passionate about helping others in in your community man helping so uh, some people like some people view helping um in different lights right so some people view helping as like you know, you have to do X or you're not helping, or you have to do Y or you're not helping, right? And I've always said, man, that there are many ways to help people and help um, develop people um, to or or to take people and elevate them, if that makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. So you can you can do simple things like just with your time. Um, and one of the things that I've always said, right, is like, it's very good. And I actually learned, I actually heard this, um, man, very, very long ago. Um, there's a book, it's by a guy, his name is uh, Norman Vincent Peel. It's called uh, The Power of Positive Thinking. Mm, and yeah, in, I've heard of that in book. The, yeah. And so in this book, um, so that book, and there's a book by a man um, named uh, David Schwartz. It's called uh, The Magic of Thinking Big. Um, and all these books, they really changed like my perspective on um, on life and like giving and helping people uh, as much as you can, right? So one of, one of the things that they talked about, right, was that um, it's, it's important that you make a lot of money. And the, and the reason for that is, is if you make a lot of money, you can disperse money and money can go a long way to help people. Um, If you don't do that, then you are limited to your, to your physical presence with helping people. So I don't know if that makes sense to everybody, but it's just, it's one of those things where like you can give your, you can give to many people, you can give your time. um, You can give advice. You can give money or, whatever you choose to give um you know all of it can be considered helping or aiding or helping to elevate somebody wow i never thought of it that way it's a pretty unique way to look at it you send me your address i'll send i'll send you those books because i got some extra copies of oh them. thank you i'd appreciate that That's so they're cool. incredible books man and they will they will change your way i think a lot of times um a lot of times people's perspective on things um, is very skewed, right? Like I'm a person that believes that like, I believe that you can think yourself out of bad situations um, because it's the power of the mind is very, uh, uh, the power of the mind is very uh, underutilized, if that makes sense. Um, You know, one, one, one guy that's very good at talking about this is a guy named, his name is uh, Jack Canfield. Hmm. And uh, he wrote all those books, those chicken noodle soup for the yes. soul books. Oh yeah, I remember. There's those. a there's a lecture on YouTube that he um, it's about two hours long, um, but he talks about the power of the mind and um, you know believing and knowing and visualizing yourself in a place before you're even there, and before you know it that you'll be there, um, you know so. 
I'll send you that too. If, oh, yeah. if uh, pop off here, you can shoot sure. me a text and I'll get it over to you. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Uh, wow. This has been awesome uh, to get to talk to you. Uh, where can people find you on social media? And uh, I know you mentioned the show in Highland Park, but uh, what other shows are coming up uh, for the listeners and viewers that uh, may want to check check out what's going on with the Psycho Boy? Man, you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter. It's at L O K E Y S nine one Oh, it's the same for that new Instagram app, the threads. So yes. I just, I just signed up for that too. You know, I'm sure everybody's signed up. I got to do the same thing. Cause I'm already, I just got a Twitter and I'm on Instagram, Facebook. So tomorrow first, one of the first things I'm going to do is create a threads. Make sure you pop me a, pop me a, pop me your name on there and I'll, I'll make sure I follow I you. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, if uh, for all the free matches, interviews, uh, visit my YouTube. It's youtube.com slash psycho boy fodder. Um, upcoming matches that we got, man. We have, of course, the Highland Park Benefit Show. I'm doing a triple threat match there with Eric Jackson and Gags the Gimp. And then we have the next day. We're doing at Studio One in Chicago. We're doing two back-to-back TV tapings for NWA Power, NWA USA. We've got, uh, I'm wrestling Caleb Connolly from Impact on July 16th at RWA for the RWA Heavyweight title. On July 30th, I'm wrestling Madman Fulton from Impact for the Extreme World Wrestling Heavyweight title. August 12th, I'm working Heath from impact for the asw heavyweight title um and i know i got a few more bookings i'd have to look at my calendar but lots of shows um and of course nwa 75 uh will be happening at the end of august so you will see me and you will see my psycho girl on nwa 75 too all right there you have it the lineup there just want to say thank you again for coming on. It means a lot to me and the listeners oh, and viewers. And uh, let's get Angelina on next time. It's uh, appreciate if you uh, tell her about the tell her about the show and love to interview her as well. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll let her know here in five seconds when I walk out of this room. Um, and we'll we'll get that. You got my number, right? So yes, just I text, do. Text me when we get off of here, and we'll get it all set up. Sweet. Thanks again. Oh, thank you, buddy. All right, take care. This is Wrestling With Heart. I hope you found this podcast to be informative and entertaining. If you did, please hit the subscribe button and look out for the next edition.